Hey folks, welcome back to Midwest Long Range. I'm Chris and we are at Midwest Gun and Pawn today. We're going to take a look at my Voodoo 360 again. This time we've got it in pieces. We're going to show you why here in just a second. So you might be wondering why in the world I took my Voodoo back apart. I mean, I already had it in the stock and we were already messed with the uh, bottom metal and the extended latch and all that kind of good stuff. But uh, the truth of it is, is that's not the foundation that the Voodoo was in the last time you saw it. Uh, as most of you know, I have my 25 Creedmoor and it usually lives in a foundation. like this. This is my 25 Creed. This is my primary center fire PRS gun. That being said, the Voodoo is my primary uh, rim fire PRS gun. The whole point of a training rifle is so that they are exact. I shoot, my 25 Creed is a Curtis Axiom build with a 24 inch barrel on a uh, MG2 foundation, Genesis 2. Um, so I ordered obviously the Voodoo 360 and it is as close to my Curtis as I could get. And I'm running the same trigger in both of them. Timony hit, love those guys. And I, get, I scored myself another MG2 off a friend of mine. Um, but we also got some new components we wanna talk about and I'll go over those right now. All right, before we get to putting this thing together, most of you have seen my, I've done several videos now on my Voodoo. It's obviously the 360. It's got a 22 inch Bartland barrel on it, uh, MTU taper. But, you know, the thing about using the foundations, especially if you're gonna use the MG2 or the Centurion, they're really heavy in the back, right? We all know it, we, uh, but they're just such a, a quality product and a great feeling stock. A lot of us go with it anyway. So I do have the brass weight set here. Um, I, I ordered those from a friend of mine, Ryan Hunt, down at Hunt's Long Range in Somerville, Missouri. Uh, sent those right up to me, he had some in stock. And then I called the guys over at 360 Precision and got their foundation Arca rail weighted system. Um, right now it's fully loaded with both brass pieces. He did send me the aluminum inserts in, as well. That way I can kind of tune this thing and try to get it locked into where I want it to go. Uh, Dan over there, great guy. Really, really enjoy talking with him. He also sent me the, uh, the quick knob for the uh, uh, cheek piece adjustment. So with that being said, I'm gonna use this weight set and the adjustability in the Arca rail to try to get this rifle as balanced as humanly possible. All right, so we've got all our stuff laid out here, weights, uh, I've got the aluminum piece for the 360 Arca rail, got some tools here. I'm just gonna mock this up for now while we uh, try to get the balance figured out. I've got an optic here to kind of simulate all that. I am gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna pull the rear brass piece out because I want some of that weight more uh, forward in the in the stock so we'll go ahead and get started on that when doing this kind of stuff you may have to do it two or three times to get the balance that you're wanting that thing right there that's pretty heavy the machining there is awesome those guys are great great product so now you can see that it is the balance point on that is much further to the front. I do have all of my T bolts uh, for the Anschutz style rail that's in the bottom of the MG2. So I'll get that put on. I'll be right back. So now we have just the front brass weight in the Arca rail and the aluminum weight in the rear. I am going to put some of the internal weights in. 
One thing about the 22 is I'm trying not to go overly heavy, but at the same time, I want a balanced rifle. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to use these six front honeycomb areas and drop my weights in. So we've got our six front weights in. We'll go ahead and set the barrel action in. This is just a going to be kind of a quick fit here. We're not. This is not final assembly by any means. All right, so we have that. The rifle is, again, it's just mocked up, okay? We're not torquing anything down. We're just checking for balance. Got her snugged up. Now, we'll see what the balance looks like on this rifle, like this. So, bring my balance mock-up deal over here which is just a tuba six and a bog pod so I tell you what we'll try it with and without the bipod so probably need a magazine too I'll tell you what that ain't half bad folks actually better than I thought it'd be. Huh. Let's take the bipod off. Set that down. Obviously it's probably going to want to go just a wee bit forward. That's not half bad, folks. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. That's, uh, Not nearly as much weight as I was thinking I was going to have to use. As you can see, there's a lot of weight left there on the table. And that is still a fairly beefy rifle. There is my precision trainer. Um, I may go back and add a little bit more weight to it. Um, but I'm actually really, really happy with even just kind of where I ended up right there. That's very early preliminary. I got to go back, reset, you know, a lot of this and... Uh, fasten the weights down, all that kind of good stuff, tighten everything up and retorque it. But this rifle came out very, very well balanced. Um, for a foundation, that is difficult to do. And I do credit a lot of that to the 360 uh, Precision Arca Rail here because it allowed me to get a, a very hefty chunk of weight. That is, I mean, you look at that. That guy's thick, heavy. I was able to locate it out front where I wanted it, not necessarily, and then with the aluminum insert, I was able to put a little bit back in back here, but then, you know, go ahead and put our pieces of our weight kit in the front, and I tell you what, I, I wanted something that had heft, but wasn't like toting a boat anchor all day. I tell you what, when I go to some of these matches, it, it truly is... I mean, people really underestimate how much work it is to carry around a 20 pound rifle all day. I know this, my 6.5 and the ACC chassis, I carried it at a center fire match. That gun weighs 23 pounds or something like that. That thing was just ridiculously heavy. Um, now, on the barricades, on the bags, you cannot, there is no substitute for a heavy rifle. I don't care what anybody says, how steady they become. Now, don't get me wrong, can you get better as a shooter to the point where you can shoot a lighter rifle just as well as other guys are shooting heavy rifles? Absolutely, it's all about skill level, it's all about practice, it's all about comfort. But for a novice shooter or a, someone who's just not all that great, kind of like myself, I love this stuff and I enjoy it, but I'm getting better all the time, but I'm still working at it. So. I like a heavy rifle to take some of that shake or that uh, just unsteadiness out where I can just kind of set it on the bag and point it where I want it to go and, you know, go with that. So I still want it heavy, but I didn't want it so heavy that, you know, I give myself a hernia carrying the thing around all day. Anyway, but so this is it. I get it back home later today. We'll get it out on the, on the cattle panels and out on some barricade stuff and see how it runs. So thanks guys. And I'll be back.